TEDx. Good afternoon. I have the best job in the world because I get to spend the whole day looking into other people's eyes. I love the eye. I'm fascinated by it. And I'm here today to hopefully make you just as fascinated with your eyes. As an eye doctor, I have a license to ask you to do something with your eyes. Close them and keep them closed for now. I want you to clear your mind of our thoughts, our thoughts, and just focus on your eyes. Did you know that they weigh, after all, no more than 0.3 ounces? or less than a plum? What if I ask you to listen to this entire talk with your eyes closed? How uncomfortable would that make you feel? Of all the things you fear most in life, would blindness be one of them? No doubt, we do take our sight for granted. And yet, for those of you over the age of 40, one out of 35 is in danger of losing the eyesight through a stealth disease called glaucoma. Please open your eyes now. Glaucoma is a chronic and incurable disease that some call the silent thief of sight. And it definitely fits that name, as there are no symptoms nor pain associated with it. What causes glaucoma? Well, unfortunately, we don't really know. What we do know is that in glaucoma, the pressure in the eye, or what we call the intraocular pressure, is too high and if left unchecked, gradually destroys the optic nerve. The optic nerve is a connection between the eyes and the brain. So when that happens, only part of what we see is actually transmitted to the brain, and we lose our visual field without noticing it. Let me show you an example of what I mean. The Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. When you lose part of your visual field, as in glaucoma, you don't simply see a black spot on it. That would be too easy. Glaucoma is much more sinister. When you lose part of your visual field, what happens is that the plasticity of the brain takes over. Or in other terms, the brain uses visual information from neighboring parts of the retina that are still intact and fills in the gap so that someone who has glaucoma would now see the Vitruvian man more like that. Much more dangerous is the feeling effect when it happens in a real life scenario, like the following. Driving, here's a street scene, but here is what a glaucoma patient would see. You see, glaucoma is quite a serious condition, and the earlier we detect it, the smaller the damage. Today, the only way to detect glaucoma is through regular eye checks with your eye doctor. And I'm sure you're all familiar with the air puff test that no one really likes. And if not, please go see your eye doctor right now. Sir, not right now. Afterwards, please. <laughs> the problem is that the device that we use to measure eye pressure was discovered six decades ago. And it has a big problem. It only measures the eye pressure for two seconds. Yet the eye pressure constantly changes throughout the day. It fluctuates depending on what we do, how we feel, what we eat, or how we sleep, and so on. Yet we. As glaucoma specialists, base our treatment decisions on a snapshot of two seconds. Two seconds. Imagine watching a movie for two seconds and then having to write a critique about it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what we do in glaucoma. Now, this device, six decades old, is still our gold standard. It's probably the only gold standard in all of medicine that has remained unchanged for so long. All the while, in other parts of medicine, continuous monitoring of blood pressure, heart rate, or blood sugar has long become mainstay, mainstream. The question really should be, five years from now, will we, in glaucoma, still offer the same outdated technology to our patients? Now, one could take an, an attitude of the 1930s, as some do, <laughs> and accept it, or one could try to innovate, which we did. Well, I've been speaking to you. I've been wearing the latest technology in glaucoma, a soft silicone contact lens. 
an intelligent contact lens. Here, my left eye. And I'm going to stand still for up to half a minute, extremely long period, and not move while you get a close-up of it. <laughs> it's the first intelligent contact lens ever to be invented, and I'm proud to have been one of its pioneers. It's intelligent because it me measures through strain gauges, an antenna and a microchip all embedded in it, small changes in the radius of the eye that corresponds to changes in your eye pressure. And you see right now the live measurements from my eye on the screen. The way it works is that this contact lens sends the information out to an outside antenna that you can either wear somewhere close to the eye, as I'm doing right now for presentation purposes, or as we prefer it in our patients, somewhere around the eye. This outside antenna then sends information and, sorry, sends power back to the contact lens by radio frequency waves. And the data are stored here. Now we get an entire 86,400 seconds of data. So instead of having some random measurements, as we do now, that could lie here or here or there, we get the whole picture. And it's important to get this whole picture because finally, we can start to treat our glaucoma patients as individuals, as opposed to averages. Personalize their treatment, and hopefully prevent them from going blind. But the revolution should not stop here. That's because whoever can monitor closely the eye can potentially learn so much more about a person than just the eye. Let me show you why. Here's a picture of the brain but it's an incomplete picture of the brain. What's missing, of course, is the eye. But why? Well, the eye, as part of the central nervous system, is a direct extension of the brain. Two-thirds of the cortex are dedicated exclusively to the eye. So one could say the eye is an organ of superlatives. Think of it. Eyes contribute 85% of a person's total knowledge. 85%. And many diseases of the body have the first signs in the eyes long before they show up elsewhere in the body. Multiple sclerosis, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. Speaking of which, imagine having your contact lens measure your blood sugar levels through the tear film and then release some insulin right into it. Science fiction? No. Researchers are already working on that in Seattle. Let me be philosophical. Many believe, as I do, that the eyes are also the gateway to our soul, to our deepest and most intimate emotions. This is a picture of the optic nerve. And it is what we lucky ophthalmologists get to see when we look deep into your eyes. It is not only a beautiful testimony to nature, to a sense of aesthetics, but it also provides us directly with an insight into the brain, which is right there, the white substance in the center. And for this, no surgery, no MRI necessary. Just this, an ophthalmologist's most important tool, a simple lens. So as I said before, whoever can monitor closely the eye can potentially learn so much more about a person. Sometimes, we may discover more than we intended. Let me speak of a study patient of mine, a 66-year-old female, a former head nurse, a serious person. When she returns after 24 hours of wearing the contact lens, and I have a look at the data, I see something I had never seen before. Because while for most of the day, her eye pressure was stable, there was a big, unexpected drop maintained for an hour at the beginning. What happened? Well, after some questioning, she admitted that after returning home, she and her husband, 74 years old, opened a bottle of champagne and had sex. <laughs> no, in science, no finding is a finding without confirmation. <laughs> Fortunately, 
as part of the study protocol that she had agreed on already. She was scheduled to undergo repeated monthly monitoring sessions. So I asked her politely whether she could try to stick to the same daily routines to the greatest extent possible. <laughs> Which she, for the sake of science, agreed to do. <laughs> so here's what happened a month later and the month after that. In pink, same patterns. Now, to treat glaucoma, we have three options. Surgery, laser intervention, or eye drops that can be absolutely sight-saving. The drop in her eye pressure was just as strong as the effect of her glaucoma drops. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Interestingly, the moment of the biggest drop coincided exactly with the moment she had her orgasm, each and every time. And how do I know? <laughs> she told me she looked at the clock. <laughs> I'm showing you this. I'm telling you this. Because I think that in future, there will be many other creative uses for smart contact lenses. And it is up to us, up to you, up to Qualcomm, to come up with creative, innovative ideas. But if you're like me and forget the names of people the moment you have met them, the next application might come in really handy. Face recognition. Have your contact lens recognize the face of the person in front of you or sitting right now next to you. Then beam to their Facebook page <laughs> and beam all the relevant data, not just the names, straight into your retina and save yourself some embarrassment. So, since the beginning of times, our eyes have brought us intelligence, development, and creativity. With this technology, for once, we give the gift of intelligence back to our eyes. Thank you very much.